Amber, the lifeblood of the Wizard 101 crafting economy. Everyone wants it. Everyone needs it. But this unassuming little golden gem is by no means easy to get under normal circumstances. From its use in crafting high-level gear and houses to the ever-sought-after Loremaster spells, Amber is used for a variety of important purposes, and at some point, pretty much every wizard needs to get their hands on some. If you say you don't, you're lying to yourself. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need it! The most popular methods I see most people employ to get Amber are fighting Gladiator and Cronus, two bosses in Aquila. But as I've said, farming is time consuming, the drops are rare, and you also run into the common issue of different people and team up clashing over which part of the dungeon they're running. Trust me, when you constantly have to butt up against level 30s trying to run the full Olympus dungeon, or people pissed at you for going after Cronus when they want to fight Hades, it'll make you want to abracadabra yourself in no time. Meanwhile, other people try to open packs, either to get Amber or in the slim hopes that the spell they're trying to craft will drop. But you all know how I feel about opening packs. They're the same picture. Finally, some clever wizards try to transmute for Amber with a recipe which can be bought from Shane McGobbin in Avalon, but even these reagents are hard to come by, so we've hit another annoying dead end. But don't worry, I'm here to give you all another option, which is guaranteed to give you an unending supply of Amber, with only a small amount of time invested up front. You see, I hear you fellow wizards, all the witches in here want that Amber, and boy oh boy do I got it. Okay. So I might have been low-key flexing in my last video, which some of the more eagle-eyed viewers pointed out. I mean, you're lucky I can't sell the stuff, because of the amount I have, I could probably destabilize the entire Wizard 1 economy in one fell swoop. Alec can move the heck out of the bazaar. There's a new queen in town. So, how in the heck did I get so much freaking amber, you may be wondering. Well, I'll tell you, but it's not for the faint of heart. I'm going to ask you to delve into newfound pits of depravity and perversion so deep that not even Ambrose himself can save your magical hide. Wow! Yes, yes, gardening. If you're anything like me, introverted, lazy, cheap, but creative, you don't want to spend hours and hours farming bosses or reagents to get Amber. You don't want to spend money on packs. You don't want to do PvP. You want an easy, passive solution with minimal effort involved. And oh boy, did I stumble upon the holy grail in the form of an unobtrusive little plant known as the King Parsley. Now, why King Parsley? Sure, on its own, it has a small chance of dropping amber at Elder, but as you can see, so do many other types of plants. However, we're interested in this plant specifically because it is self-perpetuating. Of the many plants that have a chance to drop amber, only a few can be planted over and over again without having to buy new seeds. Many plants on this list either give you no seeds upon elder harvest, meaning you keep having to buy or farm for more seeds each time you need to replant, or the plant only has a small chance of giving you a replacement seed. King Parsley has neither of these issues. Not only will it always give you a replacement King Parsley seed at Elder, it also has a chance to give you extra King Parsley seeds during mature harvests, and a chance at giving you both Amber and an Ultra King Parsley seed at Elder. The beauty of the King Parsley is that you only need one seed to get started, before it starts reproducing as fast as a rabbit, and before you know it, you go from this to this. Nice. Before you get started with King Parsley, do take note that it has several gardening needs you'll need to be prepared to provide, so you may need to wait until you have a slightly higher level wizard with access to more energy to pull this off. You'll need to plant them in a medium soil or plot. Luckily, you get access to both medium pots and the medium soil garden spell from Farley and Gollum Court when you first get access to gardening at level 12. Second, you'll need access at minimum to the rank 2 spell, Gusty Winds, but any higher level pest spells will also work fine. Gusty Winds can also be bought from Farley and Gollum Court. You will also need gardening spells that provide sun and music. I recommend the Brilliant Beams and Flute Ensemble spells offered by Marley and Mushu, since they provide the most bang for your buck energy-wise. But if you don't have access to those spells yet, lower level versions can be bought from Farley or Charlie in Krakatopia. However, with the lower level versions, you'll run out of energy faster, so you might have to grow a smaller amount of plants at a time. 
For reference, each of my plots has 69 plants, which is the maximum which gardening spells allow you to cover at once, and each costs 40 energy each day to maintain, for a total between the two plots of 80 energy per day. Still with me? Okay. Moving forward, recommended early farming spots for King Parsley include mobs such as the Corrupted Weaver and Crystal Crawler in the Crystal Grove in Dragonspire, or the Fangtooth Lava Spinner in the Forum in Dragonspire. Other farming options for higher level wizards are Master or Archmage Duels, if you have friends willing to help, or Mirror Lake in Zafaria, where multiple bosses drop the seed and there are regularly people ready to help and team up. I'll include a link to the wiki page below because there are far too many bosses to list, but pick one and stick to it. OBJECTION! But Zave, why would I farm for King Parsley when I could farm bosses for Amber instead? You know, you make a decent point, for once. But to me, the main difference is that you might need to farm lots and lots of amber to craft what you want, which takes quite a lot of time. While for my method, you only need to get one single seed to get started, then you won't have to farm ever again. So there's much less time and frustration involved than farming all the amber you'll end up needing. So sure, you can farm amber from bosses or even use other plants besides King Parsley for gardening if you want. Do what works best for you. At some point, you'll get some amber, but we don't settle for mediocrity, folks. On this channel, we go hard or we go home. It's not about money. It's about sending a message. But we're not done, my fellow wizards. Oh no, not by a long shot. Because soon, you can throw those King Parsleys right out the window. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. They may drop amber, but that's not good enough. No. What we really want from them are those sweet, sweet Ultra King Parsley seeds. You see, once you get a couple of those from the King Parsley plants, you'll never have to worry about your amber supply again. These bad boys have an extremely high 16.67% chance of dropping amber at every single harvest, along with another chance to get even more Ultra King Parsley seeds. You plant enough of these, you'll soon have more amber than you know what to do with, and your plants will continue to duplicate. OBJECTION! But Zafa, there's only a chance that the Ultra King Parsleys will drop another Ultra Seed. Won't you run out eventually and have to start all over? You're clearly not thinking big enough, Wolf, because I'm here to introduce to you a game-changing mechanic called the Wilt and Revive method. Let me break it down for you. In Wizard 101, the normal progression for a plant through gardening is the seed when you first plant it, the young phase, the adult phase where the plant starts having needs and can be harvested, and finally, the elder phase, where you can harvest your ghostly plant one last time before having to start over and replant all over again. The Wilt and Revive method ignores this natural progression and makes it so that your plant never reaches that final stage of elder, but remains instead perpetually in the adult or mature phase so you can harvest the same plant again and again and again without having to replant or get new seeds. To use this method successfully, you just need to ignore every instinct in your dopamine-addicted little gamer brain and let your plants die. Yes, you heard that correctly. It's going to take some tough love to get your garden producing the way we want it to, but it will all be worth it in the end. So, what you want to do is plant your Ultra King Parsleys, once you've gotten a couple as drops from the regular King Parsleys, and proceed as you normally would for a while. Make sure their needs are met, harvest them daily, keep any amber or extra Ultra Seeds they produce, but when they get about a day or two away from Elder, start treating them like your estranged weirdo cousin from Alabama who eats paste and enthusiastically insists on wearing his pro-incest t-shirt at family gatherings. In other words, cut off all contact and ignore the heck out of them, no matter how many times they call or whine. Wait until those Ultra King Parsley plants are in the dying stage before you go anywhere near them. Then take care of their needs again. You'll see that they go from dying to the young stage again, and the process can begin again, with you harvesting them until they are almost at elder, then letting them die again. Is this considered an abusive relationship? Maybe, but the amber is worth it. For bonus gamer points, we can also purposely slow down the Ultra King Parsley's growth by surrounding it with things that the plant dislikes, which for Ultra King Parsley is stinkweed. By slowing down its growth, you'll get even more harvests in between resets with the Wilt and Revive method meaning you get maximum amber output during each harvesting period. This big brain time. Overall, this method can be used almost indefinitely to get semi-infinite harvests, although after a very long time, the plants can stop giving you any harvests at all. 
If you notice this is happening, it's time to finally let them age to elder and replant your Ultra King Parsley crop again. Though at the point this happens, you'll likely have so many extra seeds and amber, it will only be a minor inconvenience. With so many seeds headed your way, you'll likely need a better option than your backpack or bank for storing them all. I, for example, use a seed vault I crafted to hold all my extra ultra seeds, so whenever they're needed, I'm ready. You can buy the recipe from Toshio and Mushu, so if you have the extra resources and time, it really saves you some much needed space. Something else people might be asking is how to stack your garden with the method I've shown. It's a relatively easy but admittedly tedious process and a bit complicated to explain, so I'll let other more qualified people help you out here. I recommend both Final Bastion's three layer plot method, which is the method I chose to use, and Ferric's more ambitious single layer method, which uses advanced housing movement to work. Anyway, whatever method you choose, it saves a lot of extra energy and gives you the maximum harvest possible. One extra tip I'll give you is to make sure you position your spells correctly when you use them. Notice how I have the spell positioned along the middle stack to ensure that all plants get hit and that the rings surround every single plant. If you don't do this, there's a chance you'll have plants that don't get hit by the spell and then you'll have to waste more energy tending to them individually. With all of that said and done, I should mention there is a small price to pay for all this amber. To gain this much unbridled power, we have to make a deal with the devil. Because what I was not prepared for was the ungodly cacophony every single time I want to harvest my plants. Their cries fill your mind, warming deeper and deeper, slowly driving you mad. There's no escaping these wails of the dam. They're haunting you in your dreams, Bill. Oh, thank God. That's so much better. Just do yourself a favor and mute your sound when you go to harvest. All right. So continue this gardening method, and before you know it, you'll be rolling in dough. This to me is the easiest method to get a ton of amber with very little daily time investment, since the plants continually reproduce over time and also have high drop rates for amber. Before too long, you'll be sick of the stuff. Like people might get mad at me for this, but I was actually deleting hundreds of amber at a time before King's Isle changed the inventory system to allow for reagents past 999. I had that much extra amber that I literally ran out of space. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, consider liking and subscribing, and let me know down in the comments what future content you'd like to see. Your comments from my first video honestly were so incredibly kind and supportive. Seriously, quit it guys. You're gonna make me start to feel or something. I'll hope to see you out there in the spiral, and happy questing. <sighs> it feels so nice just to sit back and relax. Ow! Huh? Where the heck did this come from?